Imox or geysers? I've been saying neither for the last three years and in this video we're going to cover why and why I think you should not upgrade to both on your Raptors. Hey guys, I'm Heli with Keep It Dirty Off-Road. This channel is all about off-roading our Raptors out in the SoCal desert and we bring you guys along for the ride and share our lessons learned along the way. By this point, you guys should have seen this EXO video right here. And we got a boo boo. We got a shock hat, shock, uh, shocks. The ninth time we've seen this happen, every single time it's progressive front coils, either eye box or geyser. But this is the 13th failure we have seen in our runs. This is catastrophic failure after upgrading to eye box or geysers after heavy off-road use in Baja. Baja is the ultimate proving grounds and will find the fault of any design. In this video, we're gonna cover the three main failure points caused by the upgraded springs, what's causing the actual issue, and then how to address all three so it does not happen to you. First off, let's go over the cause. The cause of all three issues is the same. The shock is not being allowed to work correctly. All shocks have multiple zones and bypass tubes that impact how they respond. The Fox shocks on Raptors have internal bypass tubes that allow and restrict oil flow. That in turn stiffens and softens the shock based on where it is in the stroke. And at the very bottom of the stroke is the bottom out zone, what I normally call the bump zone. This bottom out zone is at the very bottom of the shock and it's where it restricts the most oil flow and it's designed to smooth out the actual bottoming out of the shock. On the Raptor coilovers, Ford also added a rubber stop as well to further soften the bottom. It doesn't look like it does much, but it does. It does soften it a bit. When you do spring upgrades on your Raptor, you raise the truck by adding preload, typically two and a half to three inches over stock. The preload locks out the suspension travel at the bottom of the shock stroke, so three and a half inches of preload locks out about an inch and three quarters of the shock stroke, completely eliminating the bump zone with the aftermarket springs. Aftermarket springs have more metal loops, the same both for the iBox and the geysers, and the shock bottoms out when the springs fully compress before you can even hit the bottom out zone. So bottom feels stiffer, shock is not allowed to soften hitting bottom correctly, and all that load and impact is communicated to the top hat and the shock bucket. And it will eventually lead to one of three failures. There are three failure points. The top hat will disconnect, frame welds cracking, or the shock bucket cracking. The most common failure is the frame welds cracking. It actually happened on my 2020 Raptor with iBox Springs. The constant impact causes the welds to crack and separate. Stock shock bucket was just not designed for that much impact. And the Raptor is not a trophy truck, guys. It's still a stock truck. The frame cracking is the first sign of trouble. The most devastating failure is this top hat failure. This is the one EXO is seeing the most often on their Baja trails. This top hat right here is actually two pieces, the top hat itself, and then you have this little collar that actually holds the shock shaft. And this collar is held in by rivets. It's not part of the main solution, and it has rubber bursts in there to allow it to move. Upgrading the springs can damage and loosen this piece on both the bottom and the top of the stroke. So when this goes full bottom, it's pushing against it. When it's going full droop, it's pulling against it. When the suspension bottoms out, springs are putting the full load on the top hat and this don't have a full flat surface. So it's allowed to move a little bit, right? You have these little ridges right here that allow some movement. Then at full droop, the upgraded springs put pressure downward that are pulling this piece right here on the downward stroke. What makes things worse is the live off shots detect full droop and when they do that, they go full stiffness. These little rivets right here are constantly being pushed and pulled and eventually fail. When they fail, the suspension is allowed to droop too much, causing the upper and lower ball joints to fail, leading to catastrophic failure while on the trails. And it could be very dangerous when those ball joints fail on the trail because the whole suspension just collapses. Now, a less common failure, is cracking through the shock bucket. Constant extra load on the shock bucket from the shocks not working correctly and the bump zone being completely eliminated and not used, all that load is being sent up without any extra dampening. And that can cause the shock bucket to start cracking. And in worst case scenarios, the shock can break through. Now, a lot of you guys may wonder what vehicles are actually impacted by this. 
The three issues are most common on the Gen 2 and Gen 3 Raptors with upgraded eye box or geysers with live valves. The live valve shocks can get much stiffer than conventional shocks and the shocks are also more capable allowing drivers to run faster so there is more load being sent to the buckets causing all these issues. For the last two to three years after my experience with my 2020 Raptor, I stopped recommending spring upgrades altogether. Anyone that has asked me in the DMs about them, I would warn them away, but we could not talk about it publicly because we had no pictures or video of the damage. When people had this failure, they were going to use warranty or insurance to cover the repairs. Last thing they needed was their truck making the rounds on social media, all their claims would have been denied. So big thank you to Jeremiah DXO for getting the owner's permission to finally publicly post about this issue. Just know that live valves and spring upgrades don't mix, guys. 13 trucks and counting on EXL run should be more than enough evidence for you guys. This can't happen on Gen 2 Raptors with blue shocks and upgraded screens, but it is rare. You really have to be pushing it hard to see it, and I've never seen it running geysers myself for over a year on my 2017 Raptor, but it is possible. No reports of this happening on Gen 1s at all, with or without upgraded springs. It is possible, but I have not seen it. And this can happen on trucks with FRS shocks, at least the frame cracking can. Again, as you push the truck and you put too much preload up front, you can, and we have seen a few FRS trucks crack their shock buckets. All right, so how do you prevent these issues? The number one way to prevent this issue is keep the suspension stock. Stock springs allow the shock to work correctly and we have not seen any trucks with stock springs have this issue. Even those with shock collars, as long as the preload was limited to about 1.5 to 2 inches of preload max. If for those of you that do need extra height up front, I actually recommend the SDI top hat replacement. The SDI top hat right here replaces the stock top hat with this machine piece that adds about 1.75 inches of preload, and it does it with two different strategies. So here's this cutout piece to kind of show you the difference. You have 10 millimeters of preload, which ends up being about three quarter inches of preload on the suspension travel, and an 11 millimeter spacer, all in one, giving you 1.75 inch lift with the least amount of preload. So this is a really great idea because less of the shock stroke is locked out, and because the shocks are softer, they don't bind before you hit bottom, so you keep the full bottom out zone, the bump zone of the shock. So the shock can dampen bottoming out directly. And since this has a flat connection to the shock bucket, you're also getting a stronger mounting point to the shock bucket, helping reinforce the shock bucket itself, which it needs. It. This has rubber bushings that are allowed to move and it's gonna take a whole lot more force for this piece to fail over the stop top hat solution that's two pieces. I understand that some of you guys want to keep the upgraded springs. You can, but you will need to add reinforcement and limit straps. The biggest example of this is what Ford Performance did on the Baja 1000 Gen 3 Raptor. Thanks to Jeremiah from the XO, we got a look at the truck's stock suspension. <laughs> Ford applied two strategies, right? They reinforced at the top of the shock bucket to prevent cracking up there. Second, they ran a loop to the frame for limit straps. Basically, they reinforce all the areas known to crack with doublet plates and the limit straps keep the suspension from drooping too much. So if and when the top hat fails, the limit straps keep everything together and the suspension doesn't collapse. <laughs> Unfortunately, the aftermarket hasn't quite caught up yet on this issue. For the frame cracking, Fouts Motorsports makes a gusset plate to reinforce the known area that cracks on the frame. Very cool solution, very simple. But currently no one makes a doubler plate for the top of the shock bucket. Most bit travel kits include it, but it's there's nothing out there for the guys running stock. So we connected with Grow Fabers to get a plate going here for you guys soon. The prototype is done and it will be ready to order soon on the Hammer Built site. So make sure you guys subscribe to our Instagram for details on when it's released. Now for the limit straps there is some solutions out there but there's only a few kits out there and the options are limited one of the ones that you guys will probably know about is the evil evil makes a limit strap kit but in my honest opinion i'm not a fan of it it requires removing the shock and overall i don't think it would take my kind of abuse off-road and that's where i'm going from my in my opinion i don't think it would take my abuse Fouts does make a limit strap kit that I think would be the better option. It's a little bit stronger in the way it integrates to the frame. It actually clamps to the arm with no need to take apart the suspension. Unfortunately, right now it's only available for the Gen 3. We did talk to them. They are making a Gen 2 version that will be out later this month. So make sure you guys keep an eye out for that as well. All right, guys, 
If you wanna get any of the parts that we talked about here and support this channel, I hope that you guys will consider buying from me. I've partnered with Hammer Built to sell everything we recommend on this channel, and if you buy from me, I get a small commission. As far as availability goes, the SDI, the top hat replacement, is available now, along with the Fouts frame gusset plates. Fouts strap kit, unfortunately, is sold out with about a two to three week lead time right now, and it's due to all the demand after the EXO video dropped a few weeks ago. The Grow Fabric doubler plate will be available before the end of the year as well so make sure you guys keep an eye on that we'll make sure to notify you guys once it's out and again if you guys want to support the channel shoot me a dm on instagram keep it dirty underscore off road or shoot me an email at keep it dirty off road at gmail.com and i'll send you guys a custom code with the best deal i can possibly get you guys and that's it for this video guys question or comments below let me know have you guys experienced this issue yourself and that's it hope you guys learned something from this video guys hope this video inspires your build and thank you for watching